Frigidaire. It means the first electric refrigerator. The first compact electric range. Now, there's the Frigidaire Gallery Range with Symmetry Double Ovens. It's designed to cook multiple dishes at multiple temperatures, so you can prepare the entire meal at the same time. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day, everybody. We have a special veteran in the house today, a Vietnam vet, 436 Me TV Option 11. Call in. We're back with our program in a moment. <laughs> Glad to have you along on this Veterans Day. The parade starts in a little more than an hour in downtown Fresno along Tulare Street, and it ends uh, near Chickchancy Park. So if you get a chance, get out there. It's a little foggy, a little bit on the cold side, but hey, not too bad for a Veterans Day. Uh, get out there and, and, you know, salute and honor those who served their country. You're watching us live on Comcast 187, 43.6, 13.1 now. And, of course, catch the replay during the course of the day, 2 o'clock to 3 on YouTube. That's 13.6. And then the replay tonight, 8 to 9 on Biz TV. That would be 13.5. And how fitting on this day that we are going to air here on Ventura, on the Ventura Broadcasting Channels, 13.2, uh, 13.4, and 13.7, a documentary called Every Man's War. It's on Tough TV, it's on Retro, it's a short documentary. Well, here's a clip, here's a sampling of what you'll see tonight at 8 o'clock. It was 1943 when I went to war. I was almost 19. Some things about those years I've forgotten. Others I'd rather forget. Listen, I ain't got nobody back home. At least you got somebody. You should hang on to that. Thank you that you came through those trees. Get help. Tell them what's coming. Is this heaven? Hell for sure. Again, a special documentary uh, tonight on 13.2, 13.4, and 13.7 on the Ventura Broadcasting uh, Family Channels. Uh, and uh, you know how fitting that this is Veterans Day. You can watch that beginning at 8 o'clock tonight. It's called Every Man's War, so check it out. Happy Veterans Day to all. The parade, as I said, starts at about 11.10 uh, in downtown Fresno. Now. You know, keep in mind that Veterans Day officially, officially became a national holiday way back in 1954. I want to roll the videotape, my friend, and show you one man who will be celebrating Veterans Day on this day. That is the Legion of Valor in downtown Fresno, and he'll be celebrating along with millions of others around the country. His name is Tom Morton, a Vietnam veteran who served in the late 60s, of course, and there he is at a book signing event over the weekend at the Legion of Valor, although his book isn't complete yet. He's still in the process of writing the book. A little background now on Veterans Day. This holiday honors those who served the military and coincides with other holidays like Armistice Day and Remembrance Day, which are celebrated in other parts of the world to mark the anniversary of the end of World War I. The war ended on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month back in 1918. There's our guest, Tom Morton. As for Vietnam, it's the ugly war that started back in 1955, finally ended with the fall of Saigon in April of 1975. 20 long years. Our involvement, be, uh, we became involved in the late 50s though, but Americans became weary of a war a lot sooner than that. Through the Kennedy, Johnson, and Nixon years, that's why the U.S. began a gradual withdrawal. More than 58,000 U.S. soldiers died in Vietnam. Those who did survive were not received too well upon their return to this country. The Vietnam War Memorial was erected in Washington, D.C. and stands as a symbol as one of America's most unpopular wars. 
There's our guest there, and live in our studio is our guest now, Tom Morton, a Vietnam veteran, served in 1967 and 68, and he is here to take your calls. 2436-MeTV, uh, option 11. I almost gave the wrong phone number out there, but it's up on your screen. 436 me tv option 11 do call in today is veterans day the parade starting hey you can watch this program for the full hour until 11 o'clock and then jet your way make your way out to downtown fresno and watch the parade and honor those people who served in the military today is the day to do it including happy veterans day to my father a world war ii vet back with our program in just a moment this fall, there is a place, familiar and inviting, timeless and warm. Me TV, a place all your own that you can call home. Hi, honey, I'm home. This fall, home is where you'll find me. You mean to tell me that's all there is to it? That's all. Me TV Fresno, channel 43.6 and Xfinity 187. We're back here with the Veterans Day uh, program here on November the 11th, 2014 on MeTV Fresno. You're watching us, of course, on Comcast, uh, uh, Channel 187 and 43.6, and, of course, now 13.1. Our guest today, Tom Morton, a Vietnam veteran. Welcome, Tom, and happy Veterans Day to you. Thank you very much, John. Thank you for having me. I'm glad that you're here, and thank you for serving. Thank you. Yeah. You're, wel you're welcome. What does uh, Veterans Day mean to you? Well... It means a lot as far as uh, there are a lot of events and whatnot. It's nice to be appreciated. Um, and uh, I like to show my appreciation for World War II veterans and Korean veterans. And, and uh, our new veterans coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan, they, uh, they, 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 they deserve a lot of appreciation. Do you think that the Vietnam vets are finally, after all these years, appreciated as much maybe as the World War II vets or other veterans? I, I think so. It's um, I think people are realizing that that um, a lot of the Vietnam vets went through a lot, not only in Vietnam but when they came home. So. Yeah, yeah. And um, how are you going to be spending Veterans Day? Well, I'm with you till eleven o'clock, and then I'm going out to the Clovis Veterans Memorial District to. Um, uh, participate in some book signings and I'll be reading some of my excerpts from my manuscript. Um, Veteran Appreciation Day is being celebrated out there thanks to um, Heritage Fresno. Um, they've, they've sponsored that. So you'll be out there the good part of the day then after yes, this program? I think it, yes, I think it lasts until 2 o'clock and then, okay. um, then there's a veterans dinner out there at 6 o'clock. Okay, now your manuscripts and your book. Talk about your book. What's your book about, uh, Tom? Well, the book's about the, my rem remembrances of my service uh, in the Marines from 1966 to 1969. Okay. Uh, um, Vietnam is covered, but I also cover why I joined the Marine Corps, boot camp, some infantry training, uh, the trip over there by ship, my one year to the day, uh, July 29th, 1967 to July 29th, 1968. <laughs> I got out in June of 1969, so I covered the year after I got out. There's a lot of experiences. Why did you join the Marines? <laughs> um, well, my dad was a career man in the Navy, so I lived all my life in the Navy. My mom's dad was a career man in the Navy, so again, I spent the entire life in the Navy. Um, we lived in San Diego from my sixth grade on. I decided that after I flunked out from college that uh, I didn't want to be drafted. I didn't want to go in the Army. I didn't look too favorable upon the Army. Uh, Air Force wanted four years. Navy, I'd already lived in, like I said, all my life. So that left the Marine Corps. Uh, plus, and they only wanted a two-year, uh, sorry, a three-year enlistment. And um, besides that, they had those great-looking dress blue uniforms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How'd you know you could make it? I mean, you gotta, had to go through boot camp, and not everybody does. Well, I, How'd you, you know you could do it? I just believed in myself, and uh, they reinforced that when I was in the Marine Corps, when they in the in boot camp. It was yeah. just stick with it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the Vietnam era, uh, probably the most unpopular of wars, right? Mm -hmm. yes. I, I would say, uh, at least in my generation. And when you came back here, how were you received personally? Well, um, I came back. We landed in El Toro, and had to catch a bus and. All that stuff. So there are a lot of protesters. But being from San Diego, basically a military town, 
um, a lot of Navy, a lot of Marine Corps presence. Um, I, I didn't suffer so much. I, I wasn't uh, confronted as much because I just came home, went home, and went back to school and just minded my own business. But I was able to observe a lot that went on. Right. I want to roll some videotape um, uh, of the protests that took place in this country. Uh, we all are very familiar with them. At least I, I lived through them. I was a young, young boy and remember watching uh, all of the protests on television during the nightly newscasts. Uh, you know, they had, they had protests in Berkeley, uh, Kent State, where there were some shootings. Uh, few, a few students died at Kent State, you might recall that one year. And the protests were nonstop across the, the fruited plain here. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's take a phone call real quick. Good morning, caller. What's your question for Tom? Hello? You've got to turn your sound down on your TV set, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> got you. Um, I uh, just wanted to, first of all, say to your guest, belated happy birthday to the Marine Corps. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Which was yesterday. <laughs> My husband called to remind me. <laughs> and um, also that... I salute him and all the other guys who have served, the ones who didn't make it and the ones who did. And I'm not out today because of the particulates in the air. And uh, we have been blessed in our family, in our extended family. And we represented all the military services. Some have retired through the military, others just served their their time what's your we uh, have been blessed and we have been blessed and that we have never lost okay what what's your question for Tom just not a question just that we salute him those of us who can't be at the parade and uh, that we realize the blessings that our family has received and okay we know that we wouldn't have the freedoms we have today if it weren't for those. All right. Thank you for the call. I really appreciate it very much. And what goes through your head when you hear a call uh, like that come in? I'm sure you hear this all the time from people. It's, um, I don't take it personally so much because we didn't do anything specific for our, our citizens back here other than show our support uh, for democracy and to try to combat communism. Um, right. Like you, my father served in World War II as well. So mm -hmm. it's nice to hear that there's support for the Vietnam veterans. But with all the protests, and before the call came in, I, my, my question about the protests was we saw so many protests across the land. Um, you were in Vietnam when all the protests were happening, and then many of them occurred after you came back. How did you feel watching some of the people protest the war? And we're looking at some of the, the, the gruesome video now. Um, there was so much unrest. Chicago comes to mind, of course, again. Um, you were there putting your life on the line. You come back. You're not well received. And you see all these protests across the country. How did that make you feel? Um, rejected. Um, alone a lot. Um, but giving some time to think about it. Uh, their protests are kind of what we fought for. Is their uh, uh, freedom to express themselves. I didn't agree with their views, but I agree, I felt uh, they had to be expressed. And, it's, and as time went by, I understood the protests a lot more. But at the time, I didn't appreciate it. I, I was, I, I felt alone and felt bad for my uh, fellow veterans as well. During the time that you were serving in Vietnam, did you agree with the war? At the time, yes. Uh, you did? Yes. Um, you know, the, the domino effect, wanted to stop the domino effect. And uh, so I believed in the war. Um, I believed in the cruelty of the communism. And I wanted to keep uh, South Vietnam free. Yeah. What Did your opinion change as time wore on when you got back? Yes, it did. Um, How so? <sighs> well, there wasn't a domino effect. And and we, we didn't fight the war like we should have. We. I came to realize that uh, the military industrial complex was was behind a lot of it. Uh, that a lot of people made a lot of money off of the uh, selling of arms and off the blood of those who lost their lives. Yeah, there were 58,000 U.S. soldiers killed in Vietnam. Of course, how did you survive? 
You saw firsthand combat. How yes. did you make it through? How did you live through it? Uh, in the Marine Corps, you're taught to just keep going and go through, through a lot of resolve. And I was very lucky. Now, my wound uh, wasn't very serious, but it killed a guy right behind me. Who Tell had me his, what happened. I was in a comm bunker, um, Camelot District Headquarters, Tet 1968, and I had to change frequencies because our antenna had been knocked off, so I had to change frequencies to continue directing artillery fire. And the commanding officer, uh, Major Payne, uh, Army Major, was behind me looking over my shoulder, had his hand in the small of my back, and we took a 106 uh, recoilless rifle round through the bunker about two feet above my head. Knocked me on the ground and it killed him. It killed him? Yes, sir. And did it hit you? And if so, where? Uh, it caught me on the side of the face and the head. Just, just some shrapnel. It grazed. You were grazed. grazed. Pretty much, yes. And you survived? Yes, sir. Okay, obviously you wouldn't be here. <laughs> okay, uh, but uh, your immediate reaction was I was shot, um, uh, get down, uh, no. what? <laughs> when I came to, my first reaction you was... You were knocked out then? Yes. Okay. Uh, not for very long, I don't think. But um, I got up, I had to take care of my radio and keep directing artillery fire. When I got done calling in the adju adjustments that uh, the Major wanted, when he told me, um, got those adjustments called in, I turned to him and, and administered uh, first aid, but I could see that... You, you immediately knew he was dead? Oh, yeah. Because he took a shot to the head? Yes. Yeah. He had, uh, yes. He had uh, yeah. some pretty big wounds on his head and a lot of shrapnel wounds throughout his body. Um, I think there were two other uh, people killed in there. I think there were Vietnamese. I administered, uh, administered first aid to um, um, the other Marine that was in there with me. He was pretty well um, shot up. He had a lot of shrapnel wounds through his chest and whatnot. Couldn't see out of his left eye. Had a broken wrist. And the next morning, there was a lot of blood, drying blood on the comm bunker floor. And there's a big map opposite where the round came through. And you could see the silhouette of those that were standing in front of the blast. There was shrapnel all around it and the silhouette of those and standing in front of it. Hey, we're glad you're here. Tom Morton, a Vietnam veteran, and a lot of Vietnam veterans are not still to this day, years after the war uh, ended, uh, are still not able to talk about some of their experiences over there in Vietnam. I know that my former boss at KMPH is a uh, Vietnam vet, and he had a difficult time talking about the experiences that he went through during the course of the war. So we're glad Tom is here. Hey, 436, Me TV Option 11, Veterans Day. The parade starts in about 45, 50 minutes from now in downtown Fresno. Call in. We're here. Open lines and back in a moment. It was 1943 when I went to war. I was almost 19. Some things about those years I've forgotten. Others I'd rather forget. Listen, I ain't got nobody back home. At least you got somebody. You should hang on to that. The tank just came through those trees. Get help! Tell them what's coming. Is this heaven? Hell for sure. Ladies Night was started in his honor. Barstools pulled themselves out for him. The only thing Chuck Norris is afraid of is her. Cheers is the most memorable bar in the world. You may not always watch comedy, but when you do, watch Cheers. Me TV Fresno, channel 43.6 and Xfinity 187. We're back here on the program on Connect With Me on this Veterans Day, and we are live in 436 Me TV Option 11. The phone lines are wide open at this point. We're talking with Tom Morton, a Vietnam veteran. How is it that you're able to speak about what happened over there? I know a lot of veterans, Vietnam veterans, who just, I mean, I went to school with some of them. Obviously, they came, we came out of high school, and boom, they went in. But the war pretty much ended about two years after I graduated from high school. So I knew a lot of the people that went in, but they were unable to talk about it when they came back. Why are you so open and free? In fact, you're writing a book. Yes. Uh, well, I wasn't open and free for a long, long time. Yeah. Um, when I came to Fresno, I got a job here, and I had a lot of problems before that. Um, emotional, emotionally, mental? Uh, mental, physical. Uh, physical in, the, in that I got violent a lot of really? times. Really? Yes. How so? Mm, people would just anger me and I'd react, which is part of, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, part of the training. 
uh, in the Marine Corps. Yeah. Um, fight, flight. Well, in the Marine Corps, it's fight, you don't know, run. Yeah. And you get out of, out of control, and I didn't understand why. And it was just sudden outbursts that seemed You were to still be, in your 20s, though, at that time, right? Yes. Yeah. 20s, uh, 30s, uh, when it's 78. So I was over 30 when I came to Fresno. And I heard about the, the Vet Center program. So I availed myself to that, had a lot of counseling, um, and I learned how to deal with it um, and put it aside and focus more on the positive things that happened, which is part of my book, and to get out the bad things by writing about them as well. So I was able to cope with stuff, learn how to, to deal with it, uh, uh, extend my fuse, if you will. And a lot of people say, well, what's that? Well, you've heard it count to 10. Let me ask you something. I've talked to a lot of vet Vietnam veterans about this, and uh, I don't know if you felt this way. Okay, you survived the war. Did at any point during your life, did you ever feel guilty that you made it out alive and so many others did not, including those that you were close to, that you were that you worked with in and around the various hot spots in Vietnam. Yes, I think uh, the feeling I, of guilt. The feeling of guilt. I think I'm going to guess that all veterans that came came home have a little bit of guilt. I did in that um, the uh, the corpsman that that I was very close to. Yeah. I I just uh, he was such a great guy and did such a good job. Not only with 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 us Marines, but with the Vietnamese, the villagers that, that we worked with. I lived in a village with a squad of Marines, and we had a corpsman, and he would run um, uh, what we called medcaps, medical uh, uh, patrols, and he, he would take care of their illnesses, their their um, the children who got sick. Um, he had antibiotics. Uh, he taught me how to suture stuff because there were wounds and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah. There, there's a, a girl that, a small girl that fell on a barbed wire fence. He sutured up her nose. And later on, when I went through a sweep, I saw her. He did a good job. There wasn't much of a scar. They asked about him, and I had to tell him that, that he had been killed during Tet. And uh, th they wept that, they, that he had been killed. And I didn't really weep for him until after I came back and got into the program at the vet center. That's when I was finally able to let, let go and say goodbye to him. All right, now you describe where, um, you know, one of your best friends was killed by a mortar round right behind you, okay? Mm -hmm. You were injured. Uh, um, you, got, you were grazed in the face. Okay, I, does the military teach you, or how, how do you survive when, when you see so many of your friends around you getting hit, getting killed? I mean, it's easy to throw up your hands and give up at that point. Or go on. You have two choices. How do you go on while you're on the battlefield? It's reaction. That's that's what's drilled into you. Um, with the major, I knew I had a job to do. I did it, and then looked at him. But when you realize that the major was dead and gone, how do you just immediately get over that and, and, and focus on the job ahead? Well, there are others that can survive, and it's my job to try to do the best I can to help that happen. Um, there's nothing I can do for the major. Uh, th you just go on with what you have to do. I, and yeah, there's no time for grieving. No. It's, it's, at that time, I just patted him on the chest. That, that's how I said goodbye to him. And it My really goodness. wasn't um, wow. what I'd like to do. Yeah, amazing. Good morning, caller. You're on the air with Tom Morton. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I wanted to know if he still keeps in contact with his friends that he was with. <laughs> over in Vietnam. Yep. Yes, I do. Um, we connected in 90, not 90, maybe 95, but after I'd gotten help, I tracked him down. Hmm. And he was, my, he was my best friend over there, and, and he was wounded. How'd you track him down? Internet? <sighs> You know what? I don't remember John. Google. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, it wasn't through the computer. I, I remembered where he lived. Okay. And where he was from, and I, I looked it up in a phone book, <laughs> and made a couple of calls. And the first call I made was his father. I got his father. Okay. And he knew who I was. Yeah. His father knew who I was. Yeah. And I'd never talked to him before. 
And uh, so anyway, we uh, had a reunion in San Diego, and we've been in contact ever since. We go to our uh, um, combined action platoon reunions every so often, and 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 meet with those that did the same things we did. But he was my best friend over there. We we'd gone through uh, a lot of patrols together, and he was on my fire team um, for a long time. And then when I left, he took over my fire team. Yeah. So, and there were a lot of veterans over there, um, a lot of military people over there who I would imagine, and, and, and I'm sure you remember this vivid, vividly, there, there are those soldiers who probably couldn't handle the bloodshed on the battlefield. What was their reaction like, the ones who couldn't handle it? I didn't really see any of that, John, oddly you enough. didn't? No, okay. I didn't. So I, I was, I was Maybe not in your reason. platoon. Yeah. Probably not in your platoon. Um, I haven't heard b very many stories about that, other than they just froze and and um, did nothing and lucked out and it was just lived. a part of life. Yeah, you just moved on. Move on. Yeah. Hey, we're talking with Tom Morton. He's a Vietnam vet. Glad that he's here to share some of his stories on Veterans Day parade in downtown Fresno starts in about 40 minutes and uh, starts at uh, well, about 11:10 or so. So get down there after you watch our show. 436 Me TV Option 11. Got an open line, call in. Tom is here. We're back in a moment. The ballad of Andy and Barney. Andy and Barney were lawmen, bravest you ever did see. Warned ever crook in the record book to stay out of Mayberry. They were the law. Yes, they were the law. And, and they didn't no fear. The Andy Griffith Show. I guess to sum it up, you could say there's three reasons why there's so little crime in Mayberry. There's Andy, and there's me. And baby makes three. <laughs> now on Me TV Fresno. Back here on the program on Veterans Day, and I do believe we have a call coming in here on the program on Connect With Me. We're glad you're calling in, 436-MeTV, option 11. Uh, good morning, caller. What's your question? Well, I have a couple of comments in regard to things you've touched on in your conversation this morning. Okay. Uh, one is that my second husband was a Vietnam veteran, and he said that when his first two buddies early on were killed, he didn't make any more friends after that mm. because you never knew when they were going to get killed. It was too painful, so he just didn't make friends. Oh, boy. Second uh, comment is I was in my 20s when all of this was going on. Mm -hmm. My college classmates were being drafted. Later on, there was chaos and other things, and the uh, veterans returning home were... Uh, abused at uh, airports and, pl and places like that by the general mm -hmm. public, which I think was horribly despicable, um, and so on. And one thing I want to comment is there was general chaos and rebellion among all the young people long before it settled on the Vietnam issue. Yep. That was an era of rebellion and chaos among the young. Well, and for all was. sorts of different subject matters, and then it finally settled on the Vietnam War. Yeah, but you're, you're talking about and the 19... I think that a lot of people have lost track of that part of the connection. Well, you're ma'am, are you, are you still there? Yeah. Yeah, you're talking about the 1960s protest. Uh, they protested everything in the 60s. Well, that's, yeah, that's part of it. Um, and so, you know, that was the protest era. It was Woodstock. You were in Vietnam during Woodstock, but... Uh, you know, I remember that as a kid. I wasn't so old then. I was, you know, I was in elementary school, but I remember a lot of it. I mean, I remember the protests, mm -hmm. uh, Vietnam vets coming home and being spit on, as a matter of fact, uh, in, in some cases, and abused, like our caller said. Horrible, horrible, horrible. How did you survive? Were you spit on? No. Were you disrespected? No. You weren't? No. Okay. I just had some comments. But I just moved on, like I said, from a military family. And when I came back to the United States, I landed at El Toro Marine Corps Air Base. Mm. I took a taxi to the Greyhound Depot. From the mm. Greyhound Depot, I went to San Diego and, uh, and uh, took a taxi to my uh, mother-in-law's house to see yeah. my wife. Yeah. Hey, we have some combat video from Vietnam. And one of the things I remember each and every night is turning on Waller Cronkite. My parents did. Uh, as I said, I was a child. Uh, watching every day on the screen, on a little black and white screen, the war 
video or the film from Vietnam of, of horrible action. What was it like? Describe the combat in Vietnam, your experience. Ah, uh, well, it's kind of, like everything's a reaction. It, it, it's, you're taught how to do things under certain uh, specific situations and you react to those. And in the Marine Corps, it's you do it and you, go, and you move on. Just do it and move on. Caller, what's your question as we continue to look at this Vietnam Well, footage? first of all, I would like to thank him for his service to his country. Okay. Well, I have a nephew who served in uh, Afghanistan two tours. Mm. And I also have a friend who went to Vietnam. And unfortunately, he was one of those who was sprayed with Agent Orange. Is now he's suffering the consequences. Yeah. And yeah, my thanks to all of those vets who served to, to keep us safe all over the world. Okay, thank and you for the call. I, I appreciate it. I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you very much. And what goes through your mind, Tom, when you look at this old-time footage of uh, the war in Vietnam? Just that we did the best we could there, and we weren't allowed to win it. Does it conjure up any memories? Oh, yeah. There, there are smells you remember, sounds you remember, and it brings them back. They're silent here as I look at them, but I can hear them. You can hear those bombs going off. Yeah, I can hear the jets scream by. I can hear the uh, explosions. I smell the, uh, the the cordite in the air. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. It just it, it. But those were images for the for the younger generation. I mean, back in the '60s, there was no cable television. There was no internet. You had three television networks: NBC, ABC, and CBS. Those were n nightly images on our screens. Yep. Uh, Every single night, it was pounded into our head, the American public. Perhaps that's why there was so much disenchantment with the war, because of what we were seeing on the screens on a night-in, night-out night basis. Would you agree with that? Yes, I agree with that. It, I just remembered something that you triggered, talking about the protests and whatnot. The first protest about the Vietnam War I remember is the Buddhist monks setting themselves on fire in Vietnam. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the first thing I remember about protests. And that bothered me a lot. How could somebody set themselves on fire uh, over, over something? And then seeing how the protests here, and I'm, glad, I'm glad nobody set themselves on fire. Right, but the students at Kent State were, were shot. <sighs> um, what did you think when you saw that? I felt awfully, awfully bad, and I felt that they were shot because the people who shot them really had no combat experience. And in the Marine Corps and probably in the Army and every place else, you identify your target before you shoot it if you're not in a firefight. Yeah. And to me, if, if I was to look down the barrel of a rifle, look down the, the sight, and see somebody there who is not pointing any weapon at me, mm -hmm. who's not attacking me, who is one of my fellow citizens, I don't think I'd put, I could put my finger on the trigger. Yeah. And I, I can't understand how those guys did that and can't, can't say, I don't understand it at all. Yeah, I just remember the tear gas at Kent State and then the shootings and then the students going down. Uh, horrible, and they were protesting the war. Right. Um, it was you know highly publicized uh, across the nation, of course, across the world. <laughs> No yeah. doubt. All right. We're talking with Tom Wharton. We've got to take a break here on Connect With Me and talking more about Veterans Day. And you can call in at 436-MeTV, option 11. We have a phone line that's open. The parade starts in a little more than 30 minutes here in downtown Fresno at 1110 in the morning. Back with our phone calls from you and our guests in a moment. It's almost time. Now we'll find out once and for all about Clark Kent, the Superman. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a TV show. Yes, but who is he? What's his name? He's Superman. Golly, Clark, won't that be wonderful seeing Superman? Fighting a never-ending battle for truth, justice, and television the me TV way. No one can do the things that Superman does. The Adventures of Superman. Now on me TV Fresno, Xfinity 187. Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first pulsator agitator washer. 
And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. on Veterans Day and the parade starting at 11, 11, I understand, Tom, huh? Yes. <laughs> on the 11th day uh, in 2014. Gee, I wonder, that pre-planned, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, hey, I, you know, I know this is kind of unplanned for our director here, but I, we, we do have some video of the World War II Memorial. We're, we're not, you know, you didn't serve in World War II, but maybe we have that videotape and we can kind of roll it. Because I want to get your comment. Uh, there is a Vietnam Memorial, mm -hmm. and I used to live in D.C. I went to the Vietnam Memorial uh, many, many days, and I just stood there and just glared at it, stared at it, uh, was in awe of it. Now there is the World War II Memorial, which I haven't seen because I haven't been back to D.C. since uh, the building of it. What are your thoughts of the World War II Memorial? It's a beautiful memorial. I've, I've seen it. I've been there. Does it coincide well with the Vietnam Wall? Yes. It the, does? Yes. Because I was it, impressed with the Vietnam Memorial. Yeah. The, the World War II, it's a larger memorial. It is. And, and, um, Much it, bigger than the Vietnam? Yes. Okay. And the Vietnam uh, one was kept quite simple. Because mm -hmm. um, it's kept quite simple. And uh, It's I, beautiful, though, from it, what, I, what I see it, here. It is. I, um, it's, were, it's appropriate for the veterans they're honoring. Yeah. Because it was, the, you know, the greatest generation. It was quite an important war and uh, it's beautiful. A caller, what's your question for Tom? We used to hear about the demilitarized zone on the news. How close were you to the demilitarized zone where you served? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> I was right up against the demilitarized zone. You were? Yes. There's a river that goes across the north there. I was just south of that. Uh, how, so how, how close? Would you say, in terms of my viewer, put, to put it in terms of mileage, uh, probably within a couple of miles. Yeah, uh, if you want to look at a map, there's a route that runs across from uh, east to west along the northern border, mm -hmm. the demilitarized zone, and along that route is um, from going from east to west is uh, Dong Ha, Quang Tri, Cam Lo, Quezon. So all along that corridor, I was right in the middle of it there at Cam Lo District Headquarters. And some maps will yeah. show Camlo on there. It's something that we heard about on a nightly basis, the demilitarized zone. And so you were right there in the thick of it. Yes. Wow. There's a lot going on around me. How did you know, Tom, who the enemy was and who the enemy wasn't in Vietnam? <laughs> it was a jungle there. It is. How did you know? Where I was. How did you know when to shoot? How did you know who to shoot? Well, when they point a weapon at you, that's a pretty clear indication. Yeah, that's a pretty good indication. But how, do you, how did you know who the enemy was? Was it difficult? Viet Cong, yes. NVA, not so much. I saw okay. more, more NVA than I did Viet Cong. Um, the Viet Cong, you don't know they're Viet Cong until they show themselves. And by show themselves, I, I guess what I, what I mean is they, they attack somebody in the village. A lot of times, the, the VC did not directly attack us. They were support, they, they were support of NVA. Um, the only way we got to VC in the village was they tried to assassinate um, a village chief, or they did assassinate a village chief, and we were lucky and caught them. Or we caught them in an ambush. At night, in ambushes, anybody that's walking down the road where you're set up for an ambush is not our friend, and we opened up. Is that part of the reason why many people say we didn't win that war too difficult to determine who the enemy was that's that's part of it that's part of it what was it, the other part as not being allowed to do what we were trained to do which was we, what was to advance on the enemy and destroy him um, the biggest part of that was exemplified through the Navy aviator flying off of carriers they weren't allowed to to attack Russian vessels who were bringing in supplies into North Vietnam well, those supplies got down to us, down to the troops opposing us, and it was a never-ending, take it away from them, and they got it again. Take it away from them, they got it again. And so the war was just purely fought in the wrong way. We weren't fighting it to win it. Was that our biggest mistake? Yes. 
Well, besides being there, if you're going to be there, go in to win. So you think it was, now, after all these years, you think it was a mistake for us to be in Vietnam? Oh, yeah. You didn't think that then. No. But you think it now. Right. Because? Uh, probably my experience over there. I, I was in a special program. I wasn't in a, in a line infantry unit. I lived with Vietnamese. We ran security yeah. and medical support for the, for the Vietnamese villagers. And what I learned from them is the, the common people in Vietnam did not care who was in power in Saigon. All they want to do is take care of their farms, raise their rice, feed their families, and live. That's all they want to do. They didn't care about the rest of it. They didn't care about the rest Should of it. Should we be over there now looking for U.S. remains in Ab Vietnam? Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it, Are we not doing enough to, to find those remains? I, I, is, is Vietnam helping us as much as they should? I don't know. My guess is no, but that's, that's a guess on my part. I know there are people that, uh, that are trying to do that. And some, and some Vietnamese, um, not military people, I don't think, but Vietnamese who, who knew us when we were there, let's say, are trying to help. You know, yeah. They may remember where a plane's gone down or that kind of stuff. So we need to bring everybody home, including prisoners of war. Do you think there are still prisoners of war in Vietnam somewhere? Absolutely. You do? Absolutely. Being held captive yep. against their will? Yes. Where? If, what? I knew, if I knew that, we could get them, John. I didn't say specifically <laughs> where, but where do you think they are? What part of the country? I think they're in the northern part. Northern part of uh, Vietnam? Vietnam, yes. That's, you that's do. my opinion. That's your opinion. That's right. you have no Obviously, we don't know the specifics. If we knew, we'd go get them, right? right. And what would this kind why aren't we looking for those people? Why aren't we looking for those veterans if they're if they're still captive somewhere, if you if if perhaps that's true? I don't know. Is it not a top priority? I think they are, but on uh, you know, secret ops type stuff. I don't I don't think they're gonna let anybody know that we're looking for them actively. Because um, well look what's happening in in, um, in the Middle East. You know, we, we, we tell somebody we're going to look. We broadcast to our media that we're going to go look for something. We go there, and it's gone. Well, we're telling people what we're going to do before we do it. Right. And I would hope that that would change. In Vietnam, I think the same situation is going on there. But do but, you think this is a top priority for our, our nation right now, our military? Hmm. You know what? I don't know. I would hope it is. I would say top priority is taking care of the people that are on active duty that are actually fighting wars right now. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, trying to keep the same thing from happening and not bringing back everybody. Yeah. All right. We're talking with Tom Morton. He's a Vietnam vet on this Veterans Day. The parade starting at 11.11, we understand, uh, here in the morning on a Veterans Day, downtown Fresno. Check out our show. Check out the parade. And come back. Hey, call in. Before the show ends, 436-MeTV, option 11. Plenty of time left with Tom. And open line here on a Tuesday morning. Back in a moment. It was 1943 when I went to war. I was almost 19. Some things about those years I've forgotten. Others I'd rather forget. Listen, I ain't got nobody back home. At least you got somebody. Should hang on to that. Thank you. Through those trees. Get help! Tell them what's coming. Is this heaven? Hell for sure. Back here on Veterans Day, here with Tom Morton. He's a Vietnam veteran writing a book. How far along are you with the book, Tom? Uh, two thirds to three quarters full, uh, finished. So yeah. They're they're short segments. They're not they're not big narrative pieces when the book is done how long will the book be how many pages i'm going to guess clo close to 200 i would say close to 200 pages and it basically documents uh your journey from start to finish yes. in the military yes, okay sir. and what do you say about your vietnam experience in the book i don't comment it on i just explain uh, tell the story for instance uh, i have a piece in there about about tet in 68 where this major was killed yeah i I cover that. I cover um, the uh, thing with the corpsman suturing up the little girl's nose. And it's only a couple pages long. It, 
it's it's done in a staccato style. What what what, what in your opinion was the turning point in that war? Vietnam. Turning point. I would guess the turning point would be when uh, Richard Nixon was elected president. Really? It wasn't anything specific on the battlefield. No. It wasn't the Tet Offensive or... No. Every uh, battle we fought there, the United States and its allies won every battle. It, take Tet, 68. There was nationwide attacks and they were all repelled. Not immediately sometimes, but they were all repelled. So we win the battles, lose the war, and that's all done politically. Yeah, and the Tet Effects, of basically, that was the escalation to try to take over South Vietnam. And you believe that this country repelled that? Yes. Okay. And um, in, in your opinion, why was the turning point Richard Nixon when he was elected in 68? He kept his promise that he was going to get us out of Vietnam. Took and him a while. Took him a while, exactly. But um, you know, it was war, The war ended after he was impeached. Right, exactly. He was impeached in 74, and the war ended in April of 75. Yeah, it was after he resigned. Exactly. After he resigned. Yeah. Yeah. But he, he got the ball rolling, and Henry Kissinger uh, spearheaded that a lot, and um, he got us out. Where were you when uh, the, um, the war ended in Saigon, and all the, you know, the, the helicopters were flying out for the last time, uh, carrying many of refugees, of course? Uh, where were you at the time? What were you thinking? I was in San Diego, and I was working for the San Diego Union newspaper, so I saw the, you know, the front page all the time, every morning. Really? And what were you doing for the uh, Union? <laughs> I was just distributing papers to paper boys. I see. Uh, okay. Circulation manager. I see. And I remember watching the TV and, and thinking, we can't get enough of the South Vietnamese that supported us out of there. Because those that remained were going to they were going to suffer a lot at the hands of the communists, and they did. What do you think about what's going on now? As a veteran, of course, um, you must look at the situation with kind of a stink eye, what's going on at the VA. Now, they have a new head. Uh, we saw him on 60 Minutes uh, over the weekend talking about how he's going to revamp and fix the system. Because in Phoenix, uh, and I believe on the East Coast in Boston somewhere, um, it's, it's believed that some soldiers, some vets, died while waiting to get medical service. They waited for months. Right. Uh, what do you think about what's going on at the vet? You think it'll be fixed? Eventually, but not, probably not in my lifetime. Really? Not in my lifetime. It's, it's a huge, huge problem. Because? Money. Can't, can't pay the doctors enough to go to the VA and be a, a VA doctor. And that's one of the things that uh, this new director has done. He's actually raised the salaries. Of, mm -hmm. um, and that's how he's recruiting. And he wants to hire 28,000 right. medical personnel, but he also wants to fire at least 1,000, if not more, who were part of the, that system that allowed these veterans to die while waiting for, for some kind of medical service. Those 1,000, I understand, were management people, not medical people. Okay. So. My experience is the medical people are excellent at what they do and try to do it. Having been a government employee for a long time before I retired, I know that executives, the management people, can earn bonuses. And that's what happened, I believe, in Phoenix. They, um, they had the, uh, the uh, documents altered so that these executives could get their bonuses. And they were they directed people to do that kind of stuff. So the the delays in getting service were directly tied to bonuses. Mm -hmm. I believe so. That's what happened, in your opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, it's not at all VA facilities. Turns out that our VA facility here is actually one of the exceptional ones, mm -hmm. uh, as far as ever getting, had any problems there. Not at all. Nothing. Not at all. Not they even are, one incident. No. They are superb out there. <laughs> One of the, it, it takes them 25 days to get a veteran's primary care appointment. They're supposed to get it done in 30 days, and they get it done in 25. Our VA here <coughs> in Fresno has the best time for that in California. They also have the longest time to get an appointment for specialized um, service. And I, and I think part of that is specialized um, specialists cost more. And Fresno's not a, 
exactly a desirable place to go for doctors. Right. We're talking with Tom Morton. He's a Vietnam vet. And you still have a chance to call in at 436-MeTV, option 11, if you want to call in with a quick comment and a quick question. Running out of time here, and the parade starts at 1110 in the morning. Back in a moment. A top secret location. It's the spies who love me, bringing together MeTV's top super spies to fight evil at a memorable moment's notice. They're dairy. That's right. Free. Now what are we going to do? The best we can. Swab. Does that apply to me, Oscar? Possibly. And smart? The old finger in the gun trick. Maxwell Smart. MeTV Fresno. Channel 43.6 and Xfinity 187. Attention all units. We have reports of two motorcycle cops protecting California's highway. That's for us, good buddy. The Men of Chips are on MeTV. Hi, I'm John Baker. I'm John Baker. It's Officer Baker. He's the blonde one. Hi there. Officer Poncherello, man. Frank Poncherello. Well, I'm Frank Poncherello. And he's the one who's Eric Estrada. There's no way I wouldn't remember a name like that. Catch the blonde one and the one who's Eric Estrada. On now Chips. on MeTV Fresno. Xfinity 187. It's Sally and Russ on the Big Biz Show. It's more biz. And maybe they'll start listening to Baldwin McCullough. Now before you make any money moves, check in with the Brain Trust. And you are starting your week off right. For the best in true country music, relive vintage specials, one-of-a-kind concerts, and country music's earliest videos, Heartland is the heart of country. The only place where you can find country music, country stars, and country lifestyles 24-7. Heartland, the heart of country. Now on channel 13.2. Back here on the program on Veterans Day, MeTV Fresno, and Tom Morton is our guest. Uh, caller, you're on the line. Go ahead. What's your question? If you were a veteran today, what would you do to receive help? What could you do to receive help <coughs> from the VA? Good question. Just go down to the VA. That's one way. That's, that's the most direct way. Go down there, and there's an information desk. And they will probably direct you to the benefits um, uh, specialist there, yeah. and they'll determine what level you are, and what, and whether or not you are qualified for veteran services uh, at the hospital. Tom, what do you think about what's going on now? Um, we pull out of Iraq, Afghanistan. Now we're going back in, apparently, uh, not to fight. No combat units on the ground, but there to train some of the Iraqi uh, soldiers on how to deal with ISIS. ISIS is a major problem, I guess, a growing concern for the United States. They, you know, We had a terrorism expert here last week saying, yes, uh, ISIS and so many factions that are coming out. If you look at, if you look at uh, Al Qaeda, there are so many uh, groups that have branched off that are a danger to us. It, it's in Syria, it's in uh, portions of Iraq, now we're going back in there to try to fight ISIS or to train the, 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 some of the Iraqis and some of the Kurds on how to arm themselves, how to protect themselves, how to fight ISIS. What do you think about what's going on? <laughs> well, it's a difficult situation, and I believe that it should be fought with special ops. Train on the, the ground. Uh, special ops on the ground. Yep. Surgical type stuff. Yep. Get our troops out of there. You know, train them. Once you get them trained, they're on their own. And it's your country. Um, do what you need to do. But do you think the United States should eliminate uh, ISIS, wipe them off the face of the earth? Are they a threat to us, in your opinion? Absolutely. So then and we need to get directly involved. And we need to get directly involved, in my mind, by special ops. Why which is, special ops? That's the best way to find them and to finish them off. They don't get away that way. Uh, special ops people, SEALs, all those kinds of people know how to do the job, and they're and they're trained to do the job completely, mm -hmm. not go in there and slap them around a bit and pull out so they can 
so the enemy can uh, regroup. You think we pulled out of there too soon? Because now it seems like we're you know we're sending three thousand uh, uh, U.S. soldiers in there to to train certain groups to fight ISIS, and many of these people think that. You know, the ISIS and all these other uh, groups that are they're branching off al, al Qaeda are being funded by Turkey to a certain extent. And Turkey is supposed to be our ally. Exactly. Uh, we, we probably need to take a little bit more of the attitude like Israel has. Nobody's our friend. Trust no one. Trust no one. Exactly. Right. But t do you think we pulled out too soon? Look at this. They're training young kids with an AK 47. Yep. These are school kids, elementary school type kids. Uh, look, look at this video here. Doesn't this uh, concern you? It does a whole lot because <coughs> our culture is we don't shoot women and children. And when those guys, our guys out there see that, it's a tough, tough problem for them. So and, and these younger ones will end up in the front lines. If they end up in the front lines, which they probably will, what does a soldier, like a U.S. soldier, do when confronted by, say, an eight-year-old kid with an AK-47? Do you shoot to kill? I don't know what they're trained to do now, but I would guess so, and 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 it's very very difficult. And I don't think our guys are gonna. It's it's an it's an it's a no win no win situation for our guys over there. Right. It, but in the military, I guess you always have to have the attitude is kill or be killed. Right. Uh, shoot to disable is one option, but a small target like that, and you don't have that much time usually. Did we get out of there too soon? I don't think we should have been there to begin with. Like yeah. I said, special ops. You know, people need to take care of their own country. And my opinion is that we get into into too many other countries' business. And and I know we need to protect ourselves, but I think we can protect ourselves with secret ops, not having to put 40,000 of our young men on the ground in a country that... Um, and then risk their lives unnecessarily. Yeah, but if they're a threat to us, you need you obviously are in the, are, are uh, in the belief that that we need to wipe them out. Yes. If they're a direct threat to yes. us, like ISIS. Right. Keep them from coming in here, and the best way to do that is to wipe them out. Did we miscalculate ISIS, in your opinion? If we're having to go back in? Yeah, I think so. Uh, we're we're, I believe our country is kind of. Uh, see things through kind of rose-colored glasses in, in that we when we do a job we've done it right and it doesn't need to be done again mm -hmm. if you understand what I'm saying yeah and and that's not what happens yeah um, what's the message that you want people to hear from you Tom Morton on this Veterans Day what's your number one message for the general public out there maybe that didn't serve in the military and you your message is what uh, support them. Because they're all, they're over there doing indirectly what we we're just talking about, keeping the bad guys from coming over here. So it's yeah. it's actually in a roundabout way protecting our freedoms and protecting our safety. Just yeah. just give them the respect that's due, treat them kindly, and love them. What do you think of honor flight? Terrific thing. I've I've known some veterans that went on it, and they just absolutely love it. it it's a really good thing, and if you can support it. They always take donations because the, the uh, World War II veterans pay nothing. All yeah. the room, board, flight is taken care of. All right, Tom Morton, we're out of time. Hey, that Veterans Day parade starts at 1110, and you're going to be where, quickly? Clovis Veterans Memorial District for book signings, and I'll read some of my manuscript. Outstanding. Congratulations. Uh, thanks for serving our country and your country. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And thank I think you it's one of the same, isn't it? Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Hey, thank you. It's an honor to have you here today. Tom Morton, a Vietnam veteran, back again tomorrow with the president and CEO of Healed College right here in the city of Fresno. That's right on here on MeTV. Connect with me. See you tomorrow. Have a great day. Happy Veterans Day. <laughs>